Hi there guys and welcome to another Train Sim 2019 video. Today I'm bringing you something that I, well, an update to something I previewed um, about a year ago I think. Must be close to that, if not over a year ago. Um, this is of course the DP Simulations North East England route. First of all I'd like to say a massive thank you to Darren for getting back in touch with me um, and letting me preview the route again. Uh, I managed to preview this on... Preview this, preview this, preview this on uh, my uh, Sunday stream, and it went down a storm, literally a storm. People were really, really impressed. I was massively impressed anyway. So, thank you, Darren. Thank you very, very much. Right, on to the nitty gritty of it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this uh, loco started up, and we're going to get ready to move away from shunt signal. We're at York South Yard. Uh, we are on our way up to Darlington, or down railway terms, geographically up um, railway terms, down to Darlington. When Darren first sent the story to me, I was a bit like, oh, do I really want a freight scenario or, or like a non-passenger scenario for, 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 for streaming this? And he came up with the most amazing point, which I have to give him complete credit for with this. He was like, look, if you're doing... 60 70 mile an hour on the slow lines people get to see the route more and i was like oh yeah i didn't think of that so yeah no i'm really really pleased i actually got this scenario just another little note before i actually start doing this um thomas harrison is another another streamer uh also part of vulcan productions also does work for just trains as well he is streaming a passenger scenario from the hartlepool section of this route um i i think it's hartlepool he's going from anyway i'll go into where the route covers and all of that uh in a minute or two uh, but he is streaming that on Monday the 28th um, over on Tom's stream. Um, so heading over to that and give that a watch as well. I will be, I will, well, if I'm back from work on time, I'll be viewing that. If not, I'm not there in the chat. I'll be there video on demand. I'll watch it video on demand afterwards. Right. Okay, then. I've got 31, which you know I'm always pleased with anyway. So it's lovely. Let's get going. Okay. So, due to a brake issue with the DBSO, your train was terminated at York Yard North overnight for engineers to assess and make repairs. Now, given the all clear, you will continue the abandoned journey. Love a little story with a scenario. I really, really do. I also really like it when people do like um, like give it a head code and it's exactly realistic. But sometimes I just like a bit of a fairy tale scenario, or even if you do a really realistic one, there's something in there that's quite cool. I love that. Right, as soon as that 150 is out of the way, I'm pretty sure we can get going. This is only my... It's not. It's my third time driving this scenario. Um, and on the route. I did a video of this. You'll be getting this Friday night. I did, because it's Friday night now. Uh, I actually recorded this on Wednesday. And YouTube's weird new editor really threw me off. And I lost... Basically, you would have had the, the video that I'd recorded before. But it was... It just didn't know. And it's not that I edit my videos. It's to do the way the adverts are placed and everything like that. And by the time I'd finished it all, YouTube then said it was corrupted and it was no no longer usable. Um, I've had my moan at Facebook for that. Ah. Let's get thrash mode on. Let's make sure I'm claggy as I need to be. So, yeah. Uh, this is York South Yard. While we're pulling out of here. Got network rail test train with DBSO on the back. You guys can already see from just even where we are now. I mean, when I first loaded in this route, I was already completely in awe of it. The little details in this route are superb. DP simulations take their time with routes, and I appreciate that massively because of the amount of detail you can then squeeze into it. Even like from here, you can see those houses are slightly higher, so you've got the allotments there and everything like that. Everything just sort of fits. Everything fits. And the colours are good. But we come into that more. What I want you to sort of... Oh, 91 coming through. Perfect. What I'd like you to pay attention to, just before I start talking about it majorly, is a fencing. So pretty much, if not all... Um, Railways in Britain are fenced in. That's not like other countries where you can walk across the tracks whenever you want or get close to them. You can get close to the track, 
uh, you can walk across crossings, but m most, if not all, uh, British Rail, British Railways, not as in British Railways the company, but as in Britain's Railways, uh, are, are fenced in. Uh, there's exceptions to the rules, things at like Dawlish, which has got a wall. So don't get confused between walls and fences. They're contained. This route, when I previewed it the last time, I really noticed it. And now, I, I, the last time I previewed it, I did Hartlepool, Darlington to Hartlepool, I think it was. Now I've got this section, which is your fast East Coast Main Line super speed journey. I notice it more. Field divert on the 31 there is lovely. Really, really enjoy that. And fencing is one of those things that people think... That, that, I don't think people pay that much... There's a perfect example here. So you come along to the green, then you get the, the gate fence, so you get the gate as well. And then it's the same, and then there's slightly different fencing used there, there's 185 going past. You've got slightly different fencing there, and then you go back down the other side, and it's different fencing again. Whereas I feel that some developers would just use the same fence. And personally, probably... I would have used the same fence, but I'm quite lazy. Darren has got the time and the experience to know what's right to put where, and he's done it very, very well with this route. It doesn't just relate to the uh, containment of the railways, but also keep an eye on the fields. Now, some of the far distance scenery isn't done. Um, I'm quite pleased with that anyway, because I don't think it needs that much. Um, But just some of the shapes of the fields, we always get very bogged down in uh, rectangles or squares. Whereas uh, Darren's put some really nifty little quirks in them and done the hedges really well. Funnily enough, we're coming up to one of the bits that I keep bleating on about. In the in the last video I made, I bleated on about this for far too long. Uh, so I'm not going to do this, do that this time. Oh, it's further down. Skelton Bridge Junction, right? Skelton Bridge. Is that not a beautiful railway scene? It's really plain. It's really basic in what it is in real life. And in Train Sim, it's just a bridge over some water and the bank's done. But somehow, to me, that image of that 31 coming across there has just really, really, really massively impressed me massively impressed me I'm a bit smitten with it I won't lie and it's those little details in this route that really 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 just improve the immersion just really improve the immersion. So every little road bridge, every little underpass, it's not just, oh, he's driving past this, you won't see it. If you look down, you'll see that, like here, this isn't even the best example of it. Just make sure there's a little bit underneath it and all of that. There's bits further down where there's bushes right up until the parapets of the bridge and all this. It's really cool. It's a bit of 31 thrash. Because I know some of you are here for the trains. So I'm hoping the video is looking slightly better than I'm getting on um, OBS here. Because uh, I'm getting the odd... It's, it's a bit jittery, and I'm hoping that's sorted out by the time this video processes. But um, I'm getting a very, 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 very steady 50 FPS doing this run. He says just as he gets a tiny little bit of lag there. Right, 
What I'm keeping my eye out for is just coming up down here. So let's go and have a look at that. Now what I really should have done is read up again what this place was called, but I didn't. So I've passed this place many a time on my journeys up and down the East Coast mainline. And to see how well it's been represented in train sim, I'm really, really, really impressed. So much that's made me want to go and stay here. I mean, look at the detail. Matey boy sitting reading his paper. The conservatory on the side of the building, which is obviously another building that he's put together to make it look like that. The time it's taken something to go through the assets to find that sort of thing is unreal. Unreal. So remember this guy, this is still heavily work in progress. I think it'll be released as a, a, a beta soon. But um, there is still some scenery that needs a bit of work. But not actually in my eyes. But there will be people out there that will go, It's not good enough. It is, trust me. Again, you'll see the difference in the, the fencing textures. So instead of just having a fence all the way up there, just that fence, he's put some of the 2D foliage in there. Which really changes it. Really, really changes it. So I imagine you'll get some amazingly good views. Right, so you're probably wondering where this goes and what it's doing. Okay, so this is called North East England. This is version 1 of the beta. So it says, coming soon for Train Simulator, the version 1 beta of an all-new route, North East England. Built completely from scratch, North East England was conceived as a replacement for the ageing East Coast Mainline North East route, which was designed to be built at, and was designed to be built at a much higher quality using some of the latest assets available. The version 1 beta of this all-new route will feature high-quality representation of the East Coast Main Line between Darlington and York, the section of the Durham coastline between North Allerton, Hartlepool, and the section of the Darlington to Saltburn Line between Darlington and Middlesbrough, along with the addition of Tees Yard. The route is intended to be the final piece of route development by me on the Train Simulator platform, that's not me, that's Darren, and is designed to represent a network of lines throughout the area to enable multiple scenario opportunities from the outset. Users will be able to create already familiar high-speed services between Darlington and York, local services between Darlington, Middlesbrough and Hartlepool, the Grand Central services between York and Hartlepool, and a wide range of freight workings from both the York and Tees Yards, along the various industrial areas around the Billingham and Hartlepool areas. Although creating an extensive network has often been somewhat problematic due to the sometimes unstable nature of Train Simulator, understatement of the year, but I like his style, the recent announcement of 64-bit train sim, of uh, 64-bit version of Train Simulator, has made this project much more viable and much more exciting. I have plans for the route to extend in various directions, taking in multiple previously unseen main and branch lines around the area. So that's taken straight off the DPS site. So you can see from that some of the really exciting prospects that this brings. Um, the whole idea of being able to do near enough complete Grand Central services is, is phenomenal. Phenomenal. It's just... Ah. You ready for this? Now, when I talk about detail, I like little bits and pieces, little cameos and things like that. Not too much, but not too little, you know what I mean? And when I was streaming this, uh, a couple of the quite mainstream freeware developers were watching as well, root developers. And there was a lot of comments about this cripple siding here. I can't remember the name of it. I do apologise. Check this out. For just a cripple siding at the side of the line, right? How cool does that look? Now, I know there's going to be people out there going, but it'll eat my FPS. 
it may have a 1% FPS drop as you pass it, but it's worth it in my eyes for just, just the attention to detail on this. One of the big things that really struck me was uh, Chris Horsfield um, has been doing a lot of work on, on various routes at the minute, and he was talking about the positioning of these signs, and he was saying how much of an absolute pain in the backside getting those temporary speed restriction signs to sit like that must have been, and the length of time it could have taken... So with us with routes, we generally look at big things, scenery, da 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 da, what's around the track, the line side signaling, the overhead line, and just that sort of thing. Probably would have taken a good length of time, and Darren's taken the time to do that. He's taken the time to put those little bits in, and that's one of the joys of being a freeware developer is you can take your time. You're not working to a schedule as such. I'm sure you have your own schedules. Lots of freeware guys that I know do, but. It's, it's, it just explains the sort of depth that these guys go to with their their roots. Scenarios as well. DP scenarios are one of my favourites. I've lost my train. Actually, that's probably not a bad thing. Let me try and catch it. Sorry, I've got a preview of a little autopilot installed and that's caught me out. There we go. I've got it again. More about that to come. Ignore that happened. So just there you can see when you're going past these things the little bits and pieces that are included, the way... Another big thing that I find DPS do really well is how they manage colour within routes. This is a very, very green route. It's a very, very green section of route in real life in the summer. So it can get a bit overly green. In train sim, it could become quite repetitive. I don't feel this route is repetitive. As I said, this is my first... Thir first? The third time driving... First is something I need to take care of in a minute. The third time driving, and I still don't feel like I've even seen 30% of what, what the route has to offer in terms of visuals and little cameo scenes and little details. Like over there, the caravan's all stored. And I guess if you go past this part of the route, there's probably a caravan storage place there. So there's another perfect example of the way fields have been done so you're not looking at big distant square fields. And it's pretty simple, isn't it? It's just putting a fence in a bush the other way, isn't it? It's not masses. But it makes a difference from driving from the cab. Everything feels a bit closer. Everything feels a bit more in depth. I really like that. Right, I said I would take care of my thirst. I'm going to. Sorry, it's Friday, I've just finished work. I'm having a beer.
the more I drive in TS, the more hours I spend in TS, the more appreciative I become of route makers. Whilst I have the utmost admiration for the guys out there that make the locos right, and for me, that's the primary reason for playing train sim, is I like the trains. I like how they work. I couldn't give a monkey's what number 37 this is, what number 37, what number 31 this is, but it's a 31, and I like how this works, I like how this sounds, I like the sounds of the mechanics, I like the thought of how the engine's working, and how the energy's being transferred. I like the operational side, I like the fact that I'm signalled well, I like the fact that in my head I can create a story that this is going for maintenance wherever it needs to be, or it would have been, had an exam before I've just got it. The story there about the fitters being on it before I've then taken it over just gives a little role play bit to it, which is quite nice sometimes. Role play stuff really isn't my game, but it is in this sort of thing. Now, as much as you can have that, and there are people out there who can happily drive on just track with no scenery. Um, I know quite a few people do that, and they can just imagine where they are or know where their track should be and imagine it. For me, I can't. I really find routes with no scenery unplayable. Even routes that have limited scenery, I can sort of deal with, but I fight, still find them quite quite unplayable. So, route creators give even people like me, who, who just like the trains, they give us that place to run it on. And yes, lots of people can say, oh, well, I still like the DTG. The RSC, uh, East Coast Main Line. That's cool if that floats your boat. I find the immersion much better with, if I kind of know where I am. If I can kind of feel like I'm in the place where I know it looks like. It's, it's, it's much easier if it's roots I don't know. Um, but when it's roots I know, and I don't, I don't know this section that well. Um, I've done it hundreds of times. But <laughs> funnily enough... It's one of those sections of the East Coast Main Line that goes so quickly. It's like, and it's done. On a real run up, you leave York, you get to Darlington, you're like, alright, next, Newcastle, come on Newcastle, let's get it. Even if you're stopping at Durham, come on Newcastle, let's get to Newcastle. It's just a bit that never is taken into account for me. And then driving this, I'm like that. Actually, that's the bit of the route I want to see the most now. I want to go back and see this bit of the route and pay attention to this bit of the route. See, after York, for me, is generally that point where there isn't that much going on around you. You haven't got any of the big yards between, well, apart from York South. Hey. I'm going to keep doing this. I have gone south. I've sent it the wrong way around. Really stupid of me. But anyway, there's not much in here that in this stretch that really interests me. There's not many sidings where you get on track plant or anything like that. That cripple siding you sometimes did. So you're not really looking out. So it's a sort of point I pick up my iPad or I go and get get a beer or I sit at my lunch or read a magazine or something like that. And I now know that I'm not going to do that next time. I want to go and do it and see it and watch it. And it's silly because that bit between sort of Peterborough and York again doesn't have that much but it's that excitement about getting on the train I think.
another really nice little spot. Oh, 66. I don't think we've quite reached it yet, we might have passed it, but there's the halfway um, signs on the side of the track as well, which is in the screenshot actually for this video. Should have been doing 60, that was really bad of me. Somebody's eager. This is a great, there's a great shot up here. In fact, I'm going to position myself. And this this shot was a contender for another screening. But it was just, it just really sort of got me right. The super elevation coming round that curve. I can't control less it because it turns the ETS on. Me and Mr. Armstrong have to have words about that. Cross country HST. HST racing, nice. The National Express, uh, then East Coast branded livery. One of Mark Threes there. The East Coast livery is one of those ones. I've said this a million times in the video. That when it first came out, I just wasn't that thrilled by it. But it's grown and grown and grown on me. I really miss it. I don't miss the National Express one with the bits up the side. She's got a certain charm about it. <clears throat> the 
the variation in the buildings, the housing. And consider it's actually got quite a low asset requirement. I mean, asset requirements are as follows so far. I mean, I'm sure these might be subject to change, but DP Simmer was pretty good at doing this. So UK Loco and Asset Pack, West Coast Mainline Trent Valley, East Coast Mainline London to Peterborough, East Coast Mainline York to Peterborough, Liverpool to Manchester, uh, Weirdale and Teesdale Network, the AP Station Pack, which is included in loads of the stuff you've already got, I'm sure. So all of those requirements as well, funnily enough, are on Steam. They're all Steam requirements. Now I'm sure from the, for the scenario part of it, if it comes with any scenarios, you'll probably need some AP stuff. But in the grand scheme of things, I would expect that somebody with a half decent TS collection has probably got all of those routes anyway. I think the Weirdale and Teesdale network is the only one I got specifically for this. And that was over a year ago now. This bit is another little nice interesting place. It's obviously an old uh, goods yard. It's sort of been kept. Oh, just something about the detail in it. And the fact that it's there and not just represented by a couple of houses. I really like. Onto the fasts. Excellent. So we don't use the avoider, which is nice. I think it's an avoid, called an avoiding line. That bit. So tell my ministers I'm going to be in a little bit later than I said I was going to be.
just I could, I could cut this short and go, no, I don't, really don't want it, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. <coughs> this video hasn't been, <coughs> sorry, this video hasn't been a bit of a chore to make in any way, shape or form. It's been really sort of annoying, YouTube side of things. But actually, every time I've come to drive the route and the train, I've completely done it because I've been a bit excited about get to get back and drive it. It hasn't been like, if I did a scenario on the, uh, say, East Coast Mainline South, right? Now, it might be a really good scenario. But if I've driven it and a video's gone wrong, you can wait, you can pretty much bet your bum bum on it that I will be uh, leaving it a few days, if not a week, before I redrive it. This. I was itching to get back in here and drive this. Itching. I think the only things I can really comment on that are negatives, uh, that aren't even actually negatives really, uh, the use of the West Coast Main Mainline Trent Valley track. I understand why Darren's probably used this because it keeps the requirements to just steam. And it, it isn't bad. The West Coast Mainline Trent Valley track is not bad, uh, in my opinion. I do prefer the, the AP track, but it's not bad. And I'm sure somebody will make a mod for this like the week after it's out. Uh, to put AP track on it. Um, second thing that I don't really like about it is that at the moment it's not in the East Coast Mainline merge. <laughs> That's purely, purely personal. Um, because the East Coast Mainline merge is progressing to its initial release stage, uh, this has come just at a time where it's like, oh, that would be really nice to have this in there. I mean, we haven't sort out even asked Darren properly or anything about putting this in yet, so don't worry about that. But it would look very good in there. It would look very, very good. It's just got great, it's a great atmosphere to drive in really. I mean this is us on the approaches to Darlington now. And you'll see the, the line will start becoming more and more hemmed in the further we get, the closer we get. House is there. It's like you can see the car, you can see the fence, you can see the house. It doesn't it's not just a blank house plonked next to the railway line. It's got bits with it. Really getting to push the 31 to its limits as well, which I like. So you can feel we're getting closed in now. Things are building up around us. Let's get ETS disabled, see if we can... Uh, there we go, there we've got 90.
Ooh, I thought that yellow might have been for me. I think we do get a yellow soon and then probably a red, to be fair. I'm preempting that. I love the anticipation that this route gives. You know where you, <clears throat> you get into a town, you see it sort of build up around you. It's brilliant. Really, really good. It's a pacer or something's got to get ahead of us. <clears throat> oh, go in front of us, not get ahead of us. Was that on yellow? Brilliant. While we're approaching Darlington, we will nip ahead and have a look at it. So Darlington's one of those stations that I've never actually got off the train at. I've been through it lots of times, stopped at the station lots of times, never been through it. But I love how it's been done in this. It's the little bits and pieces that make it. It's the extras that he's added in here and there that just absolutely sort of... The WH Smith sign actually being a WH Smith sign. You know what I mean? It's quite nice. These flower beds and seats, 80s marble. But the most 80s feature about this station, of course, well, late 80s, early 90s, is, of course, the bridge. And that's in as well, which I really like. So it's looking really cool. Gardens have allotments and veg patches. Not just using the same housing over and over again. Non-repetitive fencing and walls. It's a very varied route is what I would say. 
colourful and varied route. And I really, really enjoy it for that. I hope that the uh, beta for this will be out ASAP so that you guys can all have a play with it. Again, it's not available to download at this moment in time. So please do bear with us on this one. Um, Darren will release it when he's good and ready. So it's that time where I say, all right then, guys. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. If you want to, head over to Twitch on a Sunday and Wednesday from 7pm for a more adult 18 plus sort of chat about trains. It's a bit like being in a pub and talking about trains is the best way I can describe it. Also, head over to alanthompsonsim.com for uh, a sneak preview of what is coming up. You'll be able to uh, create an account at the moment, uh, a basic account, not a subscriber account. And the website should be open for the freeware side of things ASAP. So do keep your eyes peeled on that, guys. So, once again, thank you very much to Darren for allowing me to preview this route. Do keep your eyes peeled on dpsimulations.com, I think it is, for this. I'll put the link in the description below. Anyway, great route. Okay, all the best, guys.